Hi everyone, I'm Rena Nine, and thank you for joining us. The White House is in damage control mode after press briefing given by the acting White House Chief of Staff. Mick Mulvaney told reporters President Trump held back Ukrainian aid and is part of a quid pro quo to further President Trump's political interests. But now he's trying to walk back that statement. Nicole Killian reports. He's like, look, this is a corrupt place. I don't want to send them a bunch of money. Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney appeared to link the president's decision to withhold nearly $400 million in military aid to Ukraine with a debunked theory that Ukraine secretly helped Hillary Clinton and 2016 election meddling originated there. Did he also mention to me in the past the, 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 the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely. No question about that. Um, but that's it. And that's why we held up the money. Reporters gave Mulvaney a chance to clarify his comment during a White House briefing. And to be clear, what you just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the, into the Democratic server uh, happened as well. We, we, do, we do that all the time with foreign policy. Later, Mulvaney issued a statement saying there was absolutely no quid pro quo and the president never told him to withhold any money over a server. The White House is blaming the media. He did a great job. He mentioned the same message over and over and over. And now the media, of course, is, you know, we, we put a statement out clarifying some of the things that the media got themselves in a tizzy over. Democrats running the impeachment inquiry against President Trump pounced on Mulvaney's comments, calling them a confession. He can back it up now, now that he's recognized uh, what he has said. But he said essentially what the president said, which was they used $390 million of U.S taxpayer dollars to leverage the Ukrainians to help Donald Trump in his upcoming election. Mulvaney worked with Energy Secretary Rick Perry and Ambassador to the EU Gordon Sondland on the president's Ukraine policy. Sondland testified about his role in Ukraine Thursday, the same day Secretary Perry announced his resignation from the Trump administration. And Nicole Killian joins me from Capitol Hill. We also have Natalie Andrews with us, who covers Congress for The Wall Street Journal. She joins us from her Washington bureau. So, Nicole, Mulvaney and the White House are really trying to walk back these comments. But which, when you line up the facts, what's the right version that more lines up with what we know? Well, I think it depends on which versions of the facts you believe. You know, we heard from the president a short time ago at the White House who uh, said that he believes his acting chief of staff did clarify his comments with that statement he put out last night. And those are similar talking points that we're hearing here on Capitol Hill. Earlier today, we heard from House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who also said that Mick was very clear in cleaning up his statement that there was no quid pro quo. And even our very own Nancy Cordes asked asked him, you know, point blank, which version of Mulvaney's statement did he believe? You know, what he said at the White House or that statement? And once again, Kevin McCarthy responded by saying that he felt that Mulvaney clarified his statement. He also went on to say that many of the witnesses who have come before these House committees in recent days have also apparently, you know, told these committees that there was no quid pro. And he also pointed to the transcript of the president's call saying that he believes there was no quid pro quo and again uh, back Mulvaney's uh, description of events. But on the flip side, of course, you have Democrats who argue just the opposite. Uh, you know, we heard from Adam Schiff yesterday saying that Mulvaney's statements uh, turned things from uh, very bad to much, much worse. You also had Congressman Eric Swalwell who uh, basically said that Mulvaney uh, co-signed on the president's confession. And I would say it's also interesting to note that even though many Republicans and the president seem to be standing behind Mulvaney for now. Uh, clearly, some members of the president's legal team aren't. Uh, we do know, according to our reporting, that they were caught off guard by Mulvaney's statement yesterday and really have been trying to put some distance there uh, between them and uh, Mulvaney. Uh, you know, Natalie, earlier this week, you reported that House Democrats were kind of holding off at this point on to launch a formal impeachment inquiry, uh, that vote. Is there a sense that could change after these comments from Mulvaney? Well, I talked to Nancy Pelosi's office, and the speaker herself was asked about Mulvaney's comments yesterday, and she said that it was the White House normalizing lawlessness. One question we have in this investigation is really how much evidence Democrats will want before they start putting articles of impeachment together. If, when you talk to some Democrats, they say that with the release of the White House transcript, with the release of the White whistleblower's complaint, that there is a enough there to start a more formal impeachment inquiry or 
articles of impeachment, they're ready to vote. But if you talk to a broader swath of the caucus, they really want to see more. They want to see the transcripts from these witnesses that are coming in to testify. And there's a whole slew lineup of witnesses next week as well. So this doesn't look like we're going to be seeing the scales tip toward a vote anytime soon. But it certainly didn't help the White House. And Natalie, I'm kind of curious about Gordon Sondland's testimony, the U.S. ambassador to the European Union. He was on Capitol Hill yesterday. Do we know a little bit more about what he testified and what he said? We know from our reporting that he said he had expressed concerns about Hunter Biden's position on the board in, with the Ukrainian energy company. And we are looking for Republicans. That is a good point for them to be able to point and say, hey, this was something that career ambassadors at the State Department raised while Joe Biden was in office as vice president. At the time, Joe Biden was dealing with his son, Bo, who was dying of cancer and was not able to focus on concerns raised by the State Department. Nicole, at this point, what's the White House most concerned about? I know, you know, the thought of the president potentially delegating Ukrainian policy to Rudy Giuliani. How concerned are they about that narrative? Well, certainly we know that uh, not everyone at the White House uh has a positive uh, opinion of Rudy Giuliani uh, right now, given all that has unfolded. And, you know, some feel that uh, he is uh, a distraction. I mean, I think, look, there is this perception of the president uh, delegating a lot of this uh, Ukrainian business to Rudy Giuliani, if you will, as a form of shadow uh, diplomacy. Uh, that is something that has been very concerning uh, from Democratic lawmakers. And, you know, even as we've listened uh, and heard heard, you know, what's come out of some of the testimony here on Capitol Hill from these various officials. I mean, you'll remember we started the week with Fiona Hill, who was a former advisor to the president on Russia. And we heard this anecdote that came out of her testimony that a former national security advisor, John Bolton, was so alarmed uh, about uh, Rudy Giuliani's conduct that he described him uh, as a hand grenade uh, that could go off, uh, something to that effect. And then you also have Gordon and Sondland, as you mentioned, who testified earlier this week, who reportedly also expressed some concerns about uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, being involved in some of this, as opposed to, you know, the president trying to work through more uh, channels within the government. You know, Nicole, uh, it's always interesting when, when these foreign stories, uh, stories that have foreign implications break, it's always fun to watch how it's being covered in another country. And I looked at the Kiev Post, the front page today, and it had this headline, shady cast of characters with all these various folks from the Trump administration involved, among them Rick Perry, energy secretary, his, his photo was posted up there. What do we know about his role? We know he resigned. What do we know about his role in the Ukraine scandal? Well, Rick Perry did give an interview today to a cable news outlet in which he did once again reaffirm that he did, in fact, urge the president to call Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky. And really, he explained that this call was mostly the reason he wanted the president to have this call was, A, to discuss ways the country was trying to eliminate corruption, since that's what Zelensky ran on, but also as it pertains to gas, you know, Secretary Perry said that this was really about trying to get Ukraine off of Russian gas and to uh, move Ukraine more into the sphere of influence of the United States and other Western states uh, when it comes to gas and, and natural uh, energy. So that being said, you know, that is Perry's explanation for why he wanted the president to have this call with Ukraine's leader. Uh, what he continues to stand by is that at no point did he hear uh, the Bidens come up in the context of his conversations with the Ukrainian officials or the White House. Uh, so he also seems to be backing this narrative from Mulvaney that there was no quid pro quo. And Natalie, now that Perry's no longer part of the administration, how do you think this could potentially impact his testimony in the impeachment inquiry? The White House has tried to claim executive privilege in the past for officials that have left the administration. So we could see that. But we have seen this week people coming to testify before Congress, even though we know the State Department didn't want them to. So this will be an all eyes on Rick Perry situation. What does he see as a personal responsibility to come if he's subpoenaed? Or does he listen to the White House that he formerly served? Nat Natalie Andrews and Nicole Killian, thank you both for joining us. Thank you.